If you're tired of being a third-rate duelist with a fourth-rate deck, then... Wait, you didn't get the memo? You're fired. You can't fire me. I'm more powerful than the Egyptian god cards themselves. I'm sorry. The people have spoken. Just try and stop me. This is Kaiba Talks. Well, it's my channel, and I reign supreme here. Time to call security. I'm sorry, Kaiba, but you leave me no choice. Mind crush. Thank you, FM. With that out the way, let's talk Gladiator Beast. Okay, Gladiator Beast. This is a deck that truly everyone hates playing against. Why? It's because Gladiator Beasts are a meta anti-meta deck, and nobody likes playing against anti-meta. They do it all. They can stop your spells and traps with powerful cards such as Herclinos. They can stop monster effects with War Chariot. They have the option to summon one of the best cards in Edison format, Gladiator Beast Geyserius, which just for free pops two cards. And they have a ton of other various powerful effects. However, as great as this deck is, it still has its flaws. One, Gladiator Beast is an aggro deck. So if you can out-tempo it, Gladiator Beast will actually begin to spiral downward. That said, usually it has the opposite effect. When Gladiator Beasts are in an advantage position, and they start to win, it's very hard to gain that advantage back. Gladiator Beast is a deck that you absolutely cannot brick against. If you brick against a Gladiator Beast player, you're probably going to lose that game because they'll just gain so much momentum. Now, throughout this video, we're gonna talk about some of the weaknesses of Gladiator Beast, how to exploit them, and how you can beat them that way you're not raging at your next gladiator beast opponent so with that said let's get into how to side against gladiator beasts okay youtube let's talk about siding against gbs first of all before siding against any deck you need to have the proper mindset about siding and Kaiba has explained this in previous videos, but one, when side decking, you should not over side. That means siding in too many different cards because it'll throw off the balance of your deck. Generally, around five to six cards should be good enough for each matchup. If you're still losing to a matchup after siding approximately five to six cards, then you might want to consider changing your main deck or playing a new deck entirely also when siding don't touch your engine your engine refers to the core cards of your deck if you side those cards out your deck won't do what it's supposed to do so always keep your engine untouched with that out the way let's talk about some cards that you can potentially side out against gladiator bees first up if you're playing black wings or veyu turbo veyu may be a card that you can consider siding out of course not all copies because veyu is absolutely broken however one copy could be beneficial because of Rediari. first of all when you draw veyu it's a brick and gladiator beast take advantage of bricks because they get free attacks. Second of all, if Veyu hits the graveyard and you don't have a Sirocco to banish it with or another Blackwing monster, then Rediaria will banish your Veyu, making it useless. So I'm not saying side out every last copy of your Veyu. However, consider siding out at least one Veyu. Next up, Caius the Shadow Monarch. Now, Caius is an amazing card, and as we know, he's one of the most popular monsters in Edison format. However, he is a monster that needs to be tribute summoned, and one of the most scariest cards that Gladiator Beast's main deck is Gladiator Beast's War Chariot. 
Imagine a scenario where you sacrifice a fodder only for Akaias to get war charioted. Now you're out at least two cards, the card you sacrificed and your Caius, to the Gladiator Beast player's one card. So although Caius is a very strong monster in Edison format, still he can be subjected to Gladiator Beast War Chariot. Next up, Car Trooper. But here, Car Trooper not only represents himself, but any monster that has a low attack. Once again, Gladiator Beasts take advantage of low attack monsters. So even though Car Trooper can mill three to run over almost any other Gladiator Beast, with the exception of a powered up Laquari or a powered up Haplomus, once its effect wears off and its attack drops down to 400, it becomes a target, a free tag out for a Gladiator Beast player. So do not keep in Car Trooper or any other low impact or low attack monster against Gladiator Beast. Next up, Gores. Although Gores is an amazing card, it suffers in that you need to be attacked in order for its effect to resolve, which means you'll drop a strong Gores and then it'll just get Mermillowed. And even if you do get out a strong token, the Gladiator Beast player can tag out for a Bestiari and you have no other cards on your field. So if the player has another Gladiator Beast monster, they can make Geyserius right after and destroy your Gores and Gores token as well. So he's simply just not worth having in your deck against Gladiator Beast. Mystic Tomato. Not only Mystic Tomato, but any other monster that has a similar effect like Mystic Tomato. A monster that needs to be destroyed by battle and sent to the graveyard to resolve their effect. Unless your deck absolutely needs this type of monster you should side it out because once again these monsters generally have low attacks and even though yes you can special summon a monster from your deck they can mermillo whatever you bring out or they can tag out into another gladiator beast monster that can benefit them regardless the point is these type of monsters are easy for gladiator beast monsters to activate and resolve their effects against Next up, Spirit Reaper. But not only Spirit Reaper, any other monster in Edison format that cannot be destroyed by battle. Because this is one Gladiator Beast players love, just to be able to attack without any consequence. So Spirit Reaper, Marshmallow, anything that they can just freely attack, you should be siding these cards out. Tragodia. Tragodia sits in the same boat as Gores. Although it's a great card and many decks main deck it such as zombies and diva heroes and lights worn when it drops the gladiator beast player can just tag out into a mermillo and get rid of it immediately miracle fusion but not only miracle fusion basically cards that rely on utilizing the graveyard gladiator beast ready Ari is so broken that some gladiator beast players actually run two of them Sean McCabe at the PS5 tournament ran double Rediari because his effect to banish a card from the opponent's graveyard is so critical. So when you draw an early game Miracle Fusion, first of all, it's a brick. And Gladiator Beasts thrive against opponents when they brick. It's one of the few decks that if you brick against it, it's very hard for you to amount a comeback. Now, Miracle Fusion is in engine card so of course you should think about whether or not you want to side out all of them i would not recommend siding out all of them but it could be beneficial to side out at least one miracle fusion next up call it a haunted now there are very few decks in the edison meta that run call it a haunted however this just shows an example of a card that is too slow it has a great effect, but it's relying on the graveyard. And just like we explained earlier, Rediari will take advantage of that. And its effect isn't good enough to keep in over the potential side cards that you can bring in in its place. And last but not least, Trap Dust Shoot. This card, one of the most broken cards in Edison format. If you resolve this card against a Gladiator Beast player 
or almost any player playing any deck, more than likely you will win that duel. And this holds true against Gladiator Beasts as well. However, GBs, in their perfect world, they go summon Laquari, summon Gladiator Beasts, set four, set five. And Trap Dust Shoot just becomes dead. And this holds true in both games two and three as well. So of course, in game one, if you get lucky enough to resolve a Dust Shoot, pat yourself on the back. But do not keep this card in for the remainder of the set. Otherwise, when you draw it, it'll more than likely just be a dead card. So that's it for cards that you should potentially side out. Let's talk about the cards that you should side in. First up, we have Cyber Dragon. Now, Cyber Dragon, an amazing card because it has attack baseline of 2100. And the strongest Gladiator Beast when powered up is 21. Of course, not counting the fusion monsters. So Cyber Dragon is one, able to beat over all of their monsters, and two, bait out their back rows. Cyber Dragon, an excellent choice if you're having a trouble against Gladiator Beast. Next up, DD Crow. Now you might begin to wonder, why is DD Crow a good card against Gladiator Beast? Well, for two reasons. One, DD Crow can stop any target that Darius or a quest would bring back. So if the quest tries to bring back, let's say, a war chariot, you can crow the war chariot. Or if the Darius tries to bring back a monster, especially Bestiari, then you can crow it. And that leads into reason number two why DD Crow is good. A lot of Gladiator Beast players play cards like Prisma and Test Tiger. So if they're on the Prisma Test Tiger build, I recommend siding in one DD Crow. If they're not on the Prisma Test Tiger build, I do not recommend siding DD Crow. The reason why you can side this one DD Crow is because when they go for their Prisma Test Tiger play, that means that the Bestiari is in the graveyard. Summon Prisma, reveal Geyserius, send Bestiari to the graveyard. Then when they tag out into Darius using their Test Tiger off the Prisma, and then Darius will target the Bestiari, that is when you chain Crow. And now Bestiari is gone. Now, when you remove from play the Bestiari, you're gonna be in a great advantage situation. But that doesn't mean that you can't still lose. Gladiator Beasts are so powerful that they still have other effects that they can win the game with. But more likely than not, once the Bestiari is banished, you can win. Next up, GB Hunter. Now, GB Hunter is a very specialized card against Gladiator Beast. As you can see, it says plainly, cards on the field cannot be returned to the deck. So all their monsters just sit there. And because GB Hunter has the defense of 2K, it'll be really hard for them to out it unless they have a card like Smashing Ground. So GB Hunter is an excellent card and also, her effect is continuous, which means Gladiator Beast War Chariot cannot even negate this effect. So GB Hunter is a specialized card against Gladiator Beast. Next up, similarly, we have Legendary Jiu-Jitsu Master. Now, this card is also great against GBs because it has a defense of 18. And as I mentioned before, None of the GBs, unless they are effects that powered them up, such as the quarry or a fusion monster, which has a much higher attack baseline, can get over Jiu-Jitsu Master. And when they attack into it, because GB players love attacking into face down monsters because to them, they're going to get a free tag out. But in Jiu-Jitsu Master case, they'll return to the top of the deck, which severely sets them back. Of course, if they have War Chariot, it's going to be unfortunate because then they don't have to worry about that. However, Jiu-Jitsu Master is still a great card to stop Gladiator Beasts. Next up, Snowman Eater. One, he's a wall. And two, not only is he a wall, but when he's flipped face up, he destroys a Gladiator Beast on the field. The problem with Snowman Eater versus GB Hunter and Jiu-Jitsu Master is 
their effects will continue as long as they're in defense mode. And of course, GB Hunter can be in attack mode as well, but why would you put it in attack mode if, unless you're going for game? Snowman Eater, once he's flipped face up, now he becomes just a target because he doesn't do anything anymore. So if you're gonna side in Snowman Eater against Gladiator Beast, make sure after you resolve the effect that you get it off of your field because it becomes a liability at that point. Then the GB player can just attack into it, take some damage and tag out into a more useful Gladiator Beast. Next up, Vanity's Fiend. But not only Vanity's Fiend, cards that stop special summoning. Gladiator Beast, they're all about tagging in and tagging out. And they can't do any of this if they cannot special summon. The reason why I recommend Vanity's Fiend over a card like Fossil Dino though, is because Vanity's Fiend is much stronger, right? Fossil Dino is very weak and only has an attack of 12, but if your deck can support Vanity's Fiend or Christia, those cards are excellent cards to stop Gladiator Beast. Next up, Deck Lockdown. Now this is a card that is not seen much play in the Edison meta. And to be honest, I would not recommend it. But the reason why it's in this video is because I want you, the viewer, to know all the options at your disposal. Now its effect to prevent monsters being special summoned from the main deck for two turns is quite good. But the reason why this card is not the best card to side against GBs is because the opponent can still summon from, or both players rather, can still summon from the extra deck, which means if they build up two GBs, they can summon Geyserius and pop deck lockdown along with any other burdensome card for them. However, if used at the right time, deck lockdown can lock their deck down. Next up, Smashing Ground. Now, Smashing Ground is good because it's a solid one for one. GB players generally do not commit many monsters to the board unless they have resolved a Secutor. So by taking their monsters out one for one, you can put them in a spot where they can't do anything. They're forced to activate cards like Dark Bribe or even Solemn Judgment just to protect their lone monster. Now, Bottomless Trap Hole is perhaps the best card against Gladiator Beasts because most of their monsters have an attack of 1500 or higher but when you use bottomless against gladiator beast you need to be wise do not just bottomless the first monster that you can against gladiator beast it's not smart so for example let's say your opponent goes summon laquari and you have a bottomless don't activate it allow yourself and of course Yu-Gi-Oh is always different each game to the next so this will not apply 100% of the time. You have to be able to read the situation and read your opponent. But generally, do not bottomless the strong monster. Wait until they get their attack in, they tag out, and when they tag out into a card like Bestiari, because they think in their mind, ah, this back row is not bottomless because they allowed the Laquari summon to go through. Then when they tag out into Bestiari, bottomless them. And since Bestiari is at one in Edison format, you don't have to worry about Geyserius for the rest of the duel. So that's one effective way that you can use bottomless against Gladiator Beast. Now, the reason why I say this pro strategy won't work every time, because let's say you get dust shooted. Well, if you got dust shooted, your opponent will know not to fall for that trick. Also, if you're going against a high level gladiator beast player what they might do when they tag out into bestiari they might book a moon but even then you're okay with that trade because they lost the book of moon and lastly a very high level gladiator beast player simply just won't allow their bestiari to get bottomless without having a card like solemn or dark bribe or once again the aforementioned book of moon to protect it but against most average level Gladiator Beast player, it's a very effective strategy to get rid of Geyserius for the rest of the duel. Next up, not only Dust Tornado, but any spell and trap removal. It severely hurts Gladiator Beast. 
Cards like Noble Man of Extermination, Mystical Space Typhoon, of course, Dust Tornado, Giant Trunate, Cold Wave, all of these cards stop Gladiator Beast from doing what they want to do. Like I said, a perfect Gladiator Beast hand is Laquari Set 5. And Spell and Trap Removal stops that. So be sure to side in a lot of chainable Spell and Trap Removal. And the reason why you want to side in chainable, if you can, Spell and Trap Removal is because when the opponent goes tag out into Bestiari, and if you have Dust Tornado, or MST set, then they'll target that, you chain it, and you hit one of their back rows. So chainable spell and trap removal is the best, but of course, cards that destroy spell and trap cards on a large scale, such as Cold Wave, Heavy Storm, Giant Trunade, even though Giant Trunade doesn't destroy, right? It just picks them up or removes them from the field, are also very good as well because they ensure that your play will go through. Next up, Mira of Oaths. Now, this is a card that I've actually sided in the past against Gladiator Beasts, but I've taken out of my side deck because it's too specific, it's too tailored toward Gladiator Beasts. The best side deck is one that can cover a multitude of different decks, and this is too tailored for Gladiator Beasts. It is an okay card at best too, because when your opponent tags out, let's say they tag out into a Bestiari, they still will get their effect. Mirror of Oath does not stop the Gladiator Beast that comes out from activating their effect. So if you have a big strong monster on the board and they tag onto a Mermillo, their Mermillo will still pop your card. Now, Mirror of Oaths is still a great card because you destroy their card and you draw a card, which is amazing. So consider siding it if you're having trouble against Gladiator Beast. Next up, Royal Oppression. This card absolutely shuts down Gladiator Beasts. They can't do anything. If they attempt to tag out, then they'll just lose their monster because you can just oppression. So this card just makes it so that the Gladiator Beast deck becomes unplayable. They need a card that can prevent Royal Oppression from activating such as Trap Stun or Solemn or MST. And of course, these cards don't necessarily prevent it from activating. They either destroy it or negate it. But the point is, they need a card to stop Royal Oppression in order to play their game. Next up, Skill Drain. Now, Skill Drain is a pretty good card against GBs because when they tag out, their monsters that they tag out into don't have an effect. With that said, just in case you did not know this, when you have Skill Drain up against Gladiator Beast, returning the Gladiator Beast monster back to the deck is actually a cost. And since the monster is not on the field, it is not negated, since Skill Drain only negates monsters' effects on the field, which means that a Gladiator Beast player is allowed to continue tagging in and tagging out even while the opponent has Skill Drain up in play. However, the monsters that they bring out of the deck or extra deck will have their effects negated. Next, Starlight Road. This is obvious because it stops the most problematic card in the Gladiator Beast deck, which is Geyserius. However, a high level Gladiator Beast player, when they summon Geyserius, they'll only target one card. And I've seen it happen before in front of my eyes. Nevertheless, most Gladiator Beast players are going to hit two cards. So, Starlight Road is an excellent counter. And Starlight Road is one of the few cards where if you successfully resolve it, more than likely you're going to win that duel because of the huge advantage and swing that you got from activating this card. And last but not least, Swallow Flip. Swallow Flip is a great card against Gladiator Beast because one, it completely stops the special summoned monster. So unlike Mirror of Oaths, which doesn't stop it, right? They still get their effect. However, you get to draw a card in response. Swallow Flip just negates the effect monster's effect and destroys it. So it's an excellent hard counter to Gladiator Beast. But once again, 
The reason why I personally went inside a card like Swallow Flip or Mirror of Earths is because they are too specific to Gladiator Beasts. If your deck has a hard time against GBs, they're excellent cards to side in. Excellent cards. However, you want to make your side deck as broad as possible, cards that can cover a multitude of different matchups. So to give an example of what I mean, Cyber Dragon. Cyber Dragon, you can side it against GBs, but you can also side it against the Machina deck. DD Crow, you can also side against GBs, but you can also side against any deck that utilizes the graveyard too much, like Zombies. Smashing Ground, you can also side it against GBs, but you can also side it against monsters that are difficult to out, like Christia or Machina Fortress. So the point is, when you are constructing your side deck, be sure to include cards that can cover a variety of different decks. But if your deck has a very hard time if, to Gladiator Beasts, then citing these very specific cards are not a bad idea. Anyway, that wraps up the citing portion of this video. So let me explain how to play against Gladiator Beasts via a duel. Okay, so this set I'm up against Alfredo 824. Now, my opponent decides to go summon Laquari, set two, and pass. And if you take note of my opening hand, you can see a true hero is on Black Wings. Fun fact, Black Wings are my second favorite deck in Edison format. First being, of course, Diva Hero. Now this hand is not very great. I do have a variety of different cards, right? Six different Black Wings. However, I don't have any spells or traps that can bait out his set spells and traps. So I decide to go with the best possible play that I can do. Starting off by summoning Shora. And the reason why I summon Shora is because Shora is so broken against Gladiator Beasts. If he runs over a monster, he gets an effect. And not to mention, Gladiator Beasts, unless they're powered up, can't beat over Shora. So I summon Shora and ask if his summon is good. After Alfredo confirms the summon of Shora, I special Gale. The reason why I special Gale in this situation is because I want to bait out Gladiator Beast War Chariot. Now, of course, the summon of Gale cannot be negated with War Chariot, but when I activate the effect, if he War Chariots, then I'm able to attack with Shora and Quilu over his Laquari to make a Synchro. So I go Gale half, and thankfully, he doesn't even have War Chariot, but he does have a Battle Trap. Now, in this situation, the worst Battle Trap for him to have, in my case, right, would have been Mirror Force, because then I lose my Gale and my Shora. However, even if he does have Mirror Force, then on his turn, the best he can do is summon a GB, tag out into Rediari, and I'll lose either my Gale or my Ashura. If I lose my Gale, then I have access to level six synchros next turn because I have Blizzard. If I lose my Shora, then I have access to level six synchros still because I have Bora in my hand, and I have access to level seven synchros as well because of Gale and Bora. So either way, Mirror Force is not getting mirror force in this situation is not the be all end all. So I attack, he has a battle trap, he flips my shore face down and my Gale is actually able to successfully run over his Laquari. Now his turn he draws and turn one, he already had the rescue cat. And as I have no back rows, he doesn't even have anything to worry. So he summons cat, he gets Sam Knight and Test Tiger and tags out into Secutor, right? Secutor is one of the best and worst cards that Gladiator Bees have. Because one, when you draw him, he's a brick. But two, when he resolves his effects, things like this happen. He gets two GBs, he goes Mermillo, pops my Gale, and Darius brings out his Laquari. And seeing from the replay, he also drew a hand of all monsters as well. 
It's funny how Dueling Book gave us both hands of all monsters, right? Anyway, he draws into another monster, but what he does here is he sets his trap stun and passes. Now I draw for turn yet another monster, but a very good one at that, Dark Arm. Last turn, he didn't have Chariot, so that means that this turn I'm also going to play as if he does not have Chariot. So what do I do? I go for the Black Rose play. I go summon Blizzard and I bring back Gale and I go Gale half. The reason why I Gale half here is once again to bait out his War Chariot. Let's say that he pulled into a Chariot, right? Then he's going to be forced to Chariot here because I can go summon my Shora and then Shora can do a lot of devastating things, right? Switch my Shora rather from defense to attack mode and do a lot of devastating things. So once the half actually successfully goes through, why well, say it's time to go for Black Rose. So I go for Black Rose and the Black Rose is successful, clears his board and look at that. One, two, three darks. So I summon Dark Arm and I already normal summoned this turn so I can't do anything else and I attack direct for 28. And this is a really strong play because his Mermillo is in the graveyard. And typically Gladiator Beast players only play one Mermillo which means he's gonna have a hard time outing this Dark Arm. So he just sets a monster, sets a back row pass. I go Dark Arm, clear both of his cards, summon Veyu, double special summon Bora, and attack with everything for game, right? So that was game one. Now, game two, I look at my opening hand and it's much better. It's a much more rounded hand. And my opponent as well also has a much more rounded hand as well. But unfortunately, the only Gladiator Beast he opened up was Marmillo. So I lure and I get rid of Veyu because Veyu is not the most helpful card against Gladiator Beast. I set Bottomless and pass. He summons his Marmillo, attacks, and tags out into Bestiari, which I wasn't expecting at all, right? I would have actually held on to this Bottomless until he tagged out into Bestiari, but the fact that he did it immediately made things a lot easier for me. So he tags out into Bestiari, I bottomless, and he chains Book, right? And at this point, he upstarts and then sets a back row and passes. So Cyber Dragon, an amazing card against Gladiator Beast, as I explained in the side decking portion of this video, is able to potentially bait out a card like Bottomless. So I ask him if the summon of Cyber Dragon is good, and he gives me the approval. But I don't want to go Whirlwind into Quilut into Gale and to Stardust because I figure he might have something to actually stop all of this. And plus, even though Stardust is really good, Stardust is better when he's back behind a back row. And I don't have any back rows in my hand. So instead, I decide to go for the Black Rose play. So I go summon Blizzard and when he approves of it, then I go Black Rose. So at this point, unfortunately, you can see that he's getting a little upset, right? Because when I summon Blizzard, I asked him if it was good, and he just says, please play, LOL. So you can tell he's getting a little bit annoyed. But still, it's proper dueling etiquette to ask if your plays are good. Because if you play too fast, your opponent can say, hey, I had a response when you summoned this card, or I had a response when you played this card. And then you have to go back. So proper dueling etiquette is always to ask your opponent if your plays are good. Actually, even if you look at the rule book, that's the way Yu-Gi-Oh is supposed to be played. When we play fast, it's actually just to shortcut and to save time. But whenever you go through phases or play cards or summon cards, you always need to check with your opponent to see if that play is fine. So anyway, he doesn't have a response. So I go for the Black Rose and it is successful. He goes, uh, Standard Prisma Test Tiger plays. He gets Secutor, I take damage, and he's able to get two GBs. He brings back Bestiari into his hand, brings back Laquire from the grave, and makes a Herclinos, sets a back row, and pass. So I draw D Crow for turn, which is absolutely amazing. Because I'm thinking in my head, he only has two cards in his hand, and I have two spells in my hand. I need him to use both cards in his hand. That way when his bestiary hits the grave, I can actually crow. So I play Whirlwind in order to negate or 
not negate, but bait out his Herclinos. And it works. And the good thing is, even if he did not negate, my next play is to summon Sirocco. So if he doesn't negate this whirlwind, then things will actually get out of hand for him because then I can get a card like Gale and I can go like Gale half. And if he doesn't have Chariot, then everything just begins to spiral downhill for him. So he negates just as I planned and I go summon Sirocco. Now at this point, I actually have two different things that I can do. I can either go Sirocco attack his Herclinos and then Palu over it or I can go attack his Darius first. Now the reason why attacking Darius first is better is because I have Fissure in my hand. And I know his last card in his hand because he added with it with Gladiator Beats a quest. So I know that card in his hand is Bestiari and I want him to drop it. That way I can crow it. So I actually activate Fissure main phase two. So now his Bestiari is in the grave. So at any point I can DD Crow this Bestiari. It's no longer a threat. Plus, I still have Kalut in my hand. So if he tries to attack over my Sirocco, I just Kalut. And these are both monster effects, so he can't stop them unless he has a Chariot. So he attacks and I Kalut. And at that point, he just scoops. And that's the game, right? So of course, even though his life points didn't hit zero, he used all his card advantage. His back row was just a cold wave, which is dead. And Gladiator Beasts have a hard time getting over monsters with 2,000. And plus, I had the option to crow his bestiari, so there was no way he was going to win this duel. But anyway, guys, I hope through this video, you guys could have a better understanding how to play against gladiator beasts. Generally, <laughs> I like to use this phrase where I like to say, like, be an ape, right? Just be aggressive as possible. That is usually the best way to play against gladiator beasts. You need to be aggressive against them because once Gladiator Beasts get the advantage, it's really hard to take it away from them. Gladiator Beasts, even though it's a solid deck, it is deck, in Edison format at least, that is full of weaknesses and holes. So as long as you exploit them by playing correctly and by utilizing the proper side cards, you should have no problems against Gladiator Beasts. Anyway, with that guys, a true hero out. Peace. Subscribe or you too will be sent to the Shadow Realm.